Hello, it's Barry. Uh, welcome to the second video in our roast dinner playlist. First one was the homemade roast beef with the Yorkshire puddings, the gravy, and the horseradish sauce. Oh my gosh, it was so good. And you guys loved it too. Uh, and you actually enjoyed the playlist way more than I thought you would. There's always a nervousness when I start something. I'm like, oh, people are gonna hate it. But thank you so much for the feedback. So have a marathon and watch the first one if you haven't already, and we'll keep adding to the playlist. So today we are doing roast chicken with gravy uh, from the juices again as normal. We're also doing some amazing, very naughty roast potatoes, some stuffing and some vegetables just alongside. Now the whole aim of this playlist is for me just to give you some sort of inspiration. There's so many ways you can put your own twist on this and you can mix and match the things, the recipes. Yo, what's up? So just enjoy it, uh, give me any feedback and let's get going. Carrots and cabbage, that's the side I'm gonna have. Obviously you can anything you like. We've got our chicken. This is like a tray with all my chicken. So we'll keep that all together. We've got our stuffing and we've got our potatoes. Now a roast dinner is a methodical thing. Once you get your timings right, it is so easy. And chicken is the one meat that you cannot get away with rare or medium. It must be well done. So it's gonna take up the majority of our cooking time. So let's get cracking on that. So this is my chicken kit. Stock cube to help make the gravy later. We've got some herbs, lemon, onion, and garlic. Also, that'll make sense in a bit. Just like the beef and all the other meats, this chicken has been left to room temperature for about half an hour, okay? So it's not cold. I quite enjoy doing that. So let's get it in the tray. This is gonna be clucking amazing, food pun. Uh, and then, uh, you know, you're touching raw food, so please consider what you're touching. All right, so here is our chicken out of the pack. It's a free range, large two kilo chicken. So uh, as I said, it needs to be cooked uh, well done. There's no sort of changing temperatures, or anything like that. But there is a chart, again, depending on the weight of the chicken. Because it's free range, it's been treated a little bit better and uh, it's been fed nicer as well. So it should be a slightly nicer chicken. Now it would be foul play, well, hey, uh, for me to sort of tell you exactly what to do. There's so many things you can do, like actually flavour, stuff flavour under the skin. You know how you do like turkey at Christmas dinner and stuff. But we're going to actually concentrate on the cavity inside the chicken, which actually helps make an incredibly stonking gravy. All right, so I am taking the string out that was holding uh, the legs under sort of the breast area here, just to open it up so we can get access in, in this bit. This bit being the cavity, this is your chance to put flavour in there. Woohoo! Oh, and of course, one other thing, the beef video. Loads of you spotted that I ate string. I didn't realise that. It was beef flavoured and actually a veggie option. So, uh, good spotting, guys. Let's try not to do that today. Oh, I've already had to wash my hands, but this is a lemon, if you didn't know. But lemon goes really well uh, with chicken. In fact, I did a Chinese-style lemon chicken on the channel, which is phenomenal. But we don't want to overpower it. If you get too much citrus in there, it's kind of like... <clears throat> You'll never get rid of it. So we can take the skin off the lemon and just actually stick the cores in. And there's an amazing gadget for that. Ugh. The first one is just a peeler. So you're just gonna take the citrus layer, the outer coating, if you will, the crust of the lemon, maybe just half a lemon on there. So that's gonna give it a nice lemony zing as it cooks through and not too much of the juice. This is how we get rid of the juice. Ugh. Ugh. There's loads you can do with the lemon juice. Ah, don't have it straight like that. Put it in a cake or something. Lemon drizzle. All right, it's gonna take a little while. So let's get this oven preheated to 180C fan, 200C non-fan, about gas mark six. You see that? That's quite a big old open in there. Onion, I've just peeled it. We're gonna take those drained lemon stumps. The lemon peel, which will actually double up as really cool lemon eyebrows. I'm not touching it because we're touching the raw chicken. Two cloves of garlic. Imagine if you had garlic cloves. You wouldn't be very popular, would you? Well, actually, you'd keep vampires away. And right here, we have some bay leaves. And this is some rosemary. Whenever I hear that name, rosemary, I can always think of an elderly auntie that's like, oh, come round my house for some tea, rosemary. Love the smell of this. So we can, like, shove that right in there. And as I say, you can get right under the skin if you want. A little mark there, you can get right in there and load other things in there. Some people put stuffing in the chicken. We're doing that separately because I feel it can sometimes catch. Just my, just my opinion. Now, if you want it to look pretty, you can tie those legs back together, but I just kind of leave it and keep it simple. Now we're gonna just do a little bit of coating on the outside. So wash your hands again to get your coating ingredients, then you get raw again, all right? Okay, so we are gonna give this bird a good old season. Salt, I'm doing salt bait, oh my gosh, there we go. Now I'm only doing it in that order because I've got to touch the raw food again. So I'm just getting a bit of butter, 
So obviously you do the butter and then you do your salt. You can't do your salt bay. You're gonna have to be raw bay. What I like to do, <laughs> it's like you're going for a massage or something. Just warm it up in your hands and then you're just gonna smear it all over the chicken. You don't need to go too harsh on it because this is what's really gonna make it catch. And if it does catch, which chicken can do often, we've got a little thing with foil that we'll do later, but we'll keep an eye on it, all right? Oh, the oven is ready. Our bird is ready, rubbed, oof, packed full of flavor. Hands, oven. In it goes. We will keep our eye on this massively, but this is essentially what sets the timing. It's gonna take over 200 minutes. Sorry, Homer, not 200 minutes. This is not Lord of the Rings. We're not stretching out that much. 100 minutes, which is still ample time to prep our other stuff. I've actually got two ovens and I've never used this top one before. So I figured let's stick it up there because it's kind of like eye level for me. I can actually see the chicken more. I'm there with you, mate. Come on. All right, so whilst that is cooking away, we can now start to prep our other things. So stuffing, the main basis of stuffing is basically breadcrumbs, binding with flavor. So sage and onion, we've got onions, we've got sage, we've got parsley and some butter. It's so simple. First thing we've got to do though is whizzy whizzy. Crust me, it's easy. Only problem is I lent my food processor to a friend for two days and I haven't had it back. It's okay, I have a blender. Uh, I've just realized it's one of them high powered sort of smoothie makers. Imagine a breadcrumb smoothie. That's what we're doing. Uh, I'm sticking it in like that and when you turn it upside down, it probably gets stuffed in. So I'm gonna have to rip. Yeah, rip and keep it loose like that. Although even that, I don't know. <laughs> Let's try it. Oh yeah, look at that. And it's stuck. <laughs> right, long story short, I'm pretty much ripping up the bread, making breadcrumbs myself by the time it blends up. So do get yourself a decent blender. Dave, if I could have that back, that would be much appreciated. But one slice at a time, roughly broken, has worked for me. Oh, oh crumbs. Three onions, we're gonna peel these. I'm gonna do a jump cut now. ta -da! Sorry about that really bad jump cut. Uh, I've now got to slice them in half, so let's do another. Need to coarsely slice your onions in half? There's a gadget for that. It failed last time, pretty badly, whoops. I want to do my own one of these. That'll be one of the gadgets I'm going to aim to try and do. There'll be more news on that soon. I, I just, just quite scary for me to launch a Kickstarter. What if I launch a Kickstarter and I'm like, yes, we've raised 10 pounds. <laughs> this has got a bendy blade. This is the one that failed last time. Ah. Ah. Oh no, come on. Oh, I'm just going to keep going. There we go. All right, that'll do. Now to soften these up, we boil them. So here are the roughly chopped onions. They're going in there like so. Boom. Bring this to a slow, steady simmer and leave it in there for about 15 minutes to soften up. So that's already been 20 minutes. Let's check in on our chicken. <gasps> Loud noises are happening. Oh yeah, you see that? Not enough juice in there yet. So what we'll do is we'll baste it in a little bit. So we'll move on to potatoes. I'm being very naughty and using duck fat, but typically you can just use vegetable or sunflower oil. So at the stage where we use that, just use a little bit of oil instead, okay? It's just effectively gonna coat the potatoes. Using the same peeler that we used uh, the lemon, or maybe not, you might have a selection of peelers. In fact, I probably do. You just need to peel uh, the potatoes. This is gonna take a long time, so. Uh... All right, that's one. Let's, uh... All right, that was fun. Uh, so what you've got to do next is, say you've got a potato like this, a small potato, it looks more like the size of an egg, but then you've got a big boy uh, like this, right? You're probably gonna wanna have or even slice it into thirds so that they cook evenly. That's what I'm gonna do. Boom. And then you can go around in circles where you end up with these slices being uh, smaller than the actual one that you wanted to achieve anyway, but you get the idea. All right, before we check in on our chicken, I kind of want that on a t-shirt. Uh, we have got over there, some bubbling away onions, as you know. Let's drain them off. Wow, it's green in colour. Look at that, it's like mountain dew. I was just about to say, my plan was to maybe, oh, steamy, um, stick this in with a stock at the end, boil the potatoes in the same water, but then it'd be very starchy in this as well. And obviously we'll end up with like bright green gravy potentially. So, fresh new bottle. Just let them sit and cool. Beyond the dense smoky forest, I could see a pug pondering his life before me. All right, so we're gonna salt this water up. Oh yeah. 
And whilst the water is cold, we will add these potatoes to the pan. Right, we're gonna bring this cold water with the potatoes in up to a boil. Once it hits the boil, we'll keep it simmering with the lid off for maybe five to 10 minutes. To be honest, we've done most of the work, but we have forgotten to check in on the chicken. Uh, and don't forget, as frantic as sometimes my videos are, I do a proper write-up on the website. Oh, wow. Oh, lovely golden color on there. Let's get you out a minute. Oh, you hear that sizzle? Oh, look what flavoring stayed in there. That smells insane. We've got some juices, you see them running? Running, 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 running in the pan no more. Flavors from inside and the juices from the chicken for our gravy later, but we can baste it a little bit. And by that, all I'm doing is I'm tilting the pan, scooping up the juices and just drizzling it on, pouring it over. I love that glossy look. And remember, if it catches too much, we can stick some foil loosely on top during baking. But for me, so far, so good. Remember, the total cooking time isn't it. We're gonna give it a good 20, 25 minute rest. And during that time, the stuffing takes that amount of time. We can make our gravy and time everything. It's gonna be great. I wish I wasn't at home alone. Whilst the potatoes are cooking, we've got a little bit of time to finish the stuffing prep. Uh, this is some sage, which is a lovely sort of woody herb, but also means someone who is wise and intelligent. Um, obviously, I get that quite a lot, right, Boston? He agreed. Sage uh, off the stalks are just the leaves, and this is some fresh parsley, about two tablespoons of each. I'm just going to muddle it together. Pui, pui, pui. If you want to grunt when you chop, it's optional, but I find that street fighter noises do sometimes help. Maybe not. This is a 20 by 22 uh, baking dish. It'd be okay. Uh, just lightly grease it. This is it. A little bit of grease lighting on it. Uh, butter. Onions that we drained earlier. Our herbs. Salt. Cup off. Breadcrumbs. Why did I not put the bread <laughs> into the breadcrumbs? Oh, you donkey. And to add a little bit of naughtiness and also lubricate it a bit, this is 75 grams of butter. All I'm doing is using that warm butter to lift it, coat the breadcrumbs, the flavoring, mix that seasoning round, grab the herbs. Your butter, grab your butter dish and get the mixed stuffing and just like gently push it in. And we're gonna sort of, I don't know, like kind of rake it along, but not, no, not rake. Rake is the wrong word because rake would kind of force it a bit. Use a spoon, <laughs> don't use a garden rake. Uh, but what I'm gonna do is sort of gently, sort of nurture, encourage. That is all you need to do, just light and fluffy. If you can press it down, you'll end up with a flapjack. So that is just gonna sit there whilst Boston gets any crumbs that I might have left <laughs> by the tripod. Uh, potatoes are bubbling away, lovely, look at that. Oh yeah, steamy, steamy. And we're just gonna let them simmer for another five minutes. One of my favorite ways to cook chips is from Heston Blumenthal, where you boil them, uh, chill them, fry them, fry. Effectively, that's what a good roast potato is, except it's just twice cooked, like most chips are actually, where you boil it, you get that nice soft center, and then you fry it for that gorgeous crispy outside, which the, the fat will give us. Oh yes. Oh, you gorgeous thing. There we go. Oh man. And all those bits we're gonna scrub into our gravy as well, lush. You see, that's, I made a mistake in the past with the chicken with the lemon. So if we left too much juice in that lemon, that would give us way more down here, but it'd be so horrible. Trust me, guys. I must say, you've got a gorgeous suntan, mate. Right, back in. I won't show you that step anymore, but I'll probably do it once more. So two or three times a basting, all right? All righty, folks, that is a colander. And these are some drained potatoes. I'm gonna try and leave them in the pan. One might try and jump out. Okay, they're all gonna try and jump out. Oh, there you go, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna just shake them up in the pan. Be careful, all right? This is a trick I learned from Jamie Oliver. It's cool, but you can sometimes go a bit aggressive and break your potatoes. You're just sort of fluffing them up a little bit. Oh yeah, you see that? Fluffage. So just like when we made Yorkshire puddings, the oil in there, we got nice and hot, like watery. That's what we're doing with the duck fat, but you can do that with the vegetable oil and the sunflower oil too. Just put it in your pan, enough for a coating so that you can roll your potatoes in it. Oh, I need half the jar, I'm just winging it. I mean, it doesn't matter if it's a little bit too less or too much. Shove it in the heat that's already in there. Hark, I've always wanted to say that. I can hear the sound of oil bubbling. Ooh. Fluffed potatoes. Sit them in the oil, roll it round to fully coat the potato as much as you can. All right, that's it. Might not look like there's much goose fat still in there, 
but once it warms up again, oh yeah. We are on the home straight. The potatoes, as they cook, keep your eye on them and just flip them evenly in that fat. Oh, it should take about 35 to 40 minutes. The chicken needs, I say, nearly half an hour to rest. I'm gonna give it another five minutes. Then we most importantly need to check that it's cooked through. You can use a thermometer probe, boom. Uh, if you don't have one of those, we can just check that if the juice is run clear, it's all good, and that's what we'll do. <laughs> yes! Sorry, I'm just uh, chicken out my chicken. Just like before, we're gonna transfer this out and make our gravy in here. But we can take our time. <laughs> Let's take the bird out. Oh, onto there. Much like the wrapper 50 cent, there's a lemon scent of like chicken in here and it's gorgeous. Now, just like last time with the gravy, this would be really simple, but because we've got a few other things going on, like the stuffing, the potatoes and the carrots, we'll get it done and then we can warm it up in a jug. And I'm putting two low flames on the hob just to warm it up and adding in a tablespoon of flour. So just like before, I'm scraping that flour around. It always feels like you're kind of cleaning the pan. It's very strange. Now, because I'm taking my time with it, you could uh, make the stock already. It could be warmed up, but this is just cold water, about 250, 300 mils. And this is a chicken stock cube. This stock cube's starting to dissolve. It's warming up. We're going to let it bubble for a couple of minutes, scraping as we go. Oh, it's going to be great. And of course, whilst we're doing that, look at that. If you turn it over, you're starting to get color. So. Keep it going. Yep, you probably want to be turning those potatoes every 15 minutes or so, but meanwhile, look what's happened here. So good. And remember, if you want it a little bit more watery, you can just add some more water in at this point, a little thicker, some more flour, or you can just sort of simmer it down a bit more. Okay, I'm ready to take that gravy and pour it through the sieve like before. And of course, the juices from the chicken that's just resting right now, you can even add a little bit more to the gravy once it's in here. I think just basically, whatever you do, it's all good. I always thought at first that would make the gravy taste burnt, but no, 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 no. So it's in the jug, ready that we can warm it on the stove again or in a microwave whenever we want. All right, 20 minutes to go. Stuffing is going in. I'm going to put it actually because this oven's so hot for the potatoes on the bottom shelf. It will do its thing and we can char it a little later if we need to. It should be fine. Potatoes are still going. The last thing we need to do is vegetables. In short, I'm just bringing a pan up to boil. We're going to cook the carrots first. It'll take a little longer than the cabbage then the cabbage and that'll be it. So don't forget this video is part of a playlist and we've done the beef one already. There is pork with crackling and apple sauce coming up and also lamb with mint sauce. So popular here uh, in the UK. The veggie one, I'm gonna do my own spin on a nut roast. A lot of you are like, can you just not do a nut roast? I've never made one. So I really wanna do that with cauliflower cheese. Maybe do one video full of desserts as well, like rice pudding, two or three in one video. And that'll be that playlist tucked away. I'm boiling my carrots and cabbage in the same pan because I like to live dangerously. The chicken is fully rested, so nice and tender. And check this out. Oh, these potatoes, I'm <laughs> taking them down there, it's so golden and gorgeous. And we're just getting a crust on that stuffing and it's time to serve. So here we go, straight out the oven. Nice toasted, the smell of that sage onion stuffing is incredible. The potatoes are lovely, gorgeous and charred. Remember the nice soft middles. It's gonna be red hot right now. That's all good. Carrots and cabbage. We got our gravy in a jug, and of course, the four removed are freshly rested chicken. All right, so excuse the mess, I just had the potatoes here just to take a quick picture of this for the thumbnail. Uh, so carving a chicken, I always find the hardest, to, but bear with me, you can get quite a lot out of it. But you've got all these parts to the chicken, and if you just cut through, like naturally, you'll find the join of the leg, and you can just cut down where the bone ends, right in the corner there, boom. And you are left with the whole leg, right in there. Boom, there's your legs. The wings themselves, they'll just come off like that. There's not that much meat on a wing, but I always think they're quite popular, aren't they? Like hot sauce wings and that. And there's like a bone that runs down the top. It's quite a cool way to know which part is your breast. So either side of that, you can make a little incision just to help you separate it. There you go. You can take nice big chunks of the chicken off like this. You see? And the same with this side, exactly the same. This is probably easier for me being left-handed actually. You just, you just gotta get the angle right and it will just fall off. How cool is that? Like I've said throughout this entire playlist, a roast is a very, very personal thing. The veg just makes it look so bland. It's just veg, but we can make it fun. I'll show you that. The stuffing, I'll just take straight out of the pan. 
oh, in there. And I'm just gonna stick some chicken there. So we've got some nicely sliced breast. You get some sort of, how to describe it, more sort of wetter. Uh, meat from a thigh and a leg, just, just, just a slightly different texture. And also quite like it with a little bit of skin on. So hey ho, bones out of all of that. We grab the good old Nigella jug. Look at that, coming out of the cow's mouth. Oh my gosh. Making a roast, I'm not gonna lie, is quite intense, but you're normally not filming it, to be honest, especially solo, but I'm so excited for this. Um, let's just try a bit of the chicken, the smell of it when it came out. Mmm, super good, super juicy, you know? The stuffing. Oh wow. Super sagey and herby. Yeah, the onion, it, I think it needs to be slightly bigger like that, not completely finely diced. It gives it a little bit of texture, really good. The gravy is soaking both of that. For me, the roast potatoes, I want a good crunch. I'm gonna pick this one. Let's see if the mic picks it up. Mmm. <laughs> Normally I just have a sandwich or a giant sushi for lunch, but I think today I'm gonna to push the boat out. That was delicious. As you know, this playlist is just my way of sharing a kind of British style roast with you. So some of you non-Brits, I hope this has given you inspiration. Some of you guys that are maybe uh, British that are unsure of how to make a roast, I hope you got some good tips from it. I'm no pro, I'm no expert. It's a very unique thing, but I hope you uh, get what you wanted from this video. Enough food puns too, I hope. See you next time. Bye-bye. Check your level player. No matter what your style, the kitchen's for me, Simon's mustache, goatee, maybe all three. 